this so much. I'm so glad I finally did it because I said I've been thinking about it for a while. Uh, this is very animated, like animation, animation. I should have said at the beginning, it's like creating your own animated cell. It's, but it's your work, it's your version, it's you. And like I said, Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this week's How To Tuesday. Um, I have been brainstorming this idea for a while. It's something I used to do a long, long time ago, and I instantly fell in love with it, and it's been popping up in my imagination lately, and I thought, why not use it? Why not do it? Why not teach it to the people? So I'm going to teach it to you guys today. Um, first of all, hello. How is everybody? I hope you guys are doing well. Um, all is pretty good at the home front here. We've actually finally started to get some cold weather. <laughs> Cloudy and cold and then blue skies and, you know, still checking out the area. I've got lots to learn in a brand new state. So um, it's been really fun. We had a good weekend. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's get into what we're going to do today. I'm going to use, I have acrylic paints, just a simple craft acrylic paints. I have a bunch of different colors. Um, I'm not going to pull them all over because I have a lot because I couldn't decide what color palette I was going to go with. I wasn't gonna, wasn't sure if I was going to do bright and cheery like I do in my portraits or if I was going to do more um, natural, you know, traditional skin tones. I'm still not sure. I think I know, but I'm not 100% sure. But these are just the craft, the craft smart acrylic paints, a craft smart acrylic paints. Um, love them. You don't need a lot of this paint because... We're gonna use very, very small amounts. I just have my little, where is it? I have my little um, tinfoil plate ready to go. Ready to go. I will use that to death. <laughs> we'll use it over and over and over again. And I'm using two different substrates today. I'm using a Fabriano hot press watercolor paper, 140 pound, nine by 12, because it's one of my faves. Um, it, it can endure anything. But today we're actually gonna do watercolor on it. And Drum roll, please. Brrr. Also going to work on acetate. What? The crowd goes wild. <laughs> it's really fun. I have this whole story when I sit here because I'm usually by myself when I film. So I have like this whole, you know, movie genre going through my brain as I instruct things. <laughs> so I crack myself up. Um, but we're working on acetate today. And I will show you what I mean when we get started. Well, actually, I'll show you now. I'll start it. I'll, I'll t explain it now. Um, what we're going to do is, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel and draw a new image. I'm going to use one of mine. You're more than welcome to do and draw something out. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to trace it, line it up, so that it's pretty centered. And then I'm going to take one of my drawing tools. I think it's going to be my thin Sharpie. I wasn't sure at the time. It's going to be my thin, ultra fine point Sharpie. And trace out all of the lines. Not the hair. I'm going to leave it solid. <clears throat> but, you know, I'll show you. I think I'm getting arthritis in my finger, I think, which, you know, I'm not like, wow, yay, I'm so excited. It's okay if you go past your lines, it's okay. I'm not taping it down because I can see what I'm doing. Oops, my pen is being persnickety. Go nice and slow. You want nice dark lines. <coughs> right? Okay. Go nice and slow. And if it does slip, you have, you know, you like I said, you can definitely um move it around again to find the spot. And this time you guys, at this point, you guys can edit if you're using something that you've done before, if you're tracing something new. Use any of the black parts like her pupil and like I have her eyeliner, I will put in black. I'm not gonna include these lines this time because there won't be, they'll be pretty bold and I don't wanna have that bold line there. With graphite, it was easier to leave it a little subtle. And at the end, when you've finished, you 
you can, um, once you lift up your paper, acetate, you can see if you missed anything. Sorry, I get very focused. Very focused when I'm tracing. Go nice and slow because it is permanent marker. So once it's down, it's down. So now I can see, I'll lift just gently. I can see my features on there, so we're good. And then I'm just gonna keep going. While I do this, let me say hello to my newcomers. Welcome to my channel. Would love if you're enjoying what you're seeing and you enjoy my teachings and How To Tuesday. Um, then please like and subscribe and click the bell. For those of you who have been here a while, I'm going to take this all the way up. Because that looks a little weird. I have um, a Patreon channel. I would be honored if you would go and check it out. The link will be in the description box. Remember I said at this time you can start editing. This is the time if you don't like the straight hairdo but you really like her face, you can go in and... Ah! No! Okay, I hit a bump. Let me get that out of the way. It's because of that. Dang it. This will just make it thicker there. As I was saying, I would be honored if you would go and uh, check out my Patreon. If you're enjoying the How To Tuesdays, the real-time version is on my Patreon channel. We have a lot of fun over there. Not the smoothest line, huh? That's all right, you won't really notice it once, once all is said and done. I'm also not going to do the teal line. I think. I think. The hardest part is not having a swoop, a hand like swooping, like the extension long enough to keep the line going. So every time you stop, Hope that your next line isn't bumpy. But like I said, it'll correct itself once we finish the whole piece. You want to make sure all your sections are connected. So lift this over. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, see that? Let's put this on the back of these. So she looks pretty good. I don't think I missed anything. I didn't take really one right there. Oh, I forgot to put in the little bit right there. 
Okay, so right now I would suggest after you finish tracing, and you guys, you can use um, like a cellophane bag um, to practice. You can use a cellophane bag. You can use um, a gro like a plastic bag just to get an idea of it. Okay, so after you've done the tracing, then you're going to sign it. And now, once we start working with the paints, you're going to work on the back side. So I signed it so you could tell which side was which. So my signature is backwards, okay? But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get these out of the way. Because one, all, once all is said and done, we're gonna paint this too, and we're gonna do this first. Paint our watercolor paper so it has time to dry. And then once all is said and done, and we finish painting the back of our uh, acetate, we're gonna put it on top of this, and you'll have a magic reveal, okay? Very, very excited. I hope you guys have time to play. I hope you find time to play this. Um, cause it's such a cool, cool technique when it's all done with the way the two work together with the background and the acrylic paint and how it sits on the acetate. It's amazing. Okay. All right. You guys ready? So, uh, we're going to get started. I'm going to use, first of all, I also have my, did I go over everything? Yeah, I did my paper. We're going to use, I'm using my Oahu watercolor brush pens. They're all filled, um, to just do my background. And then I have my bucket of water over here for my acrylic paints because I don't want to muddy the two and I'm gonna grab so here is a time frame where you will decide because you want it to be a contrast you want your background to be a contrast to the, the piece itself right so I think I'm gonna do I'll add some color but I think most of the time most of it I'll just keep it like traditional <laughs> famous last words right uh, keep a traditional skin tone and then um, make my background. It'll work regardless. If I change my mind partial way, part way through, it'll still be fabulous. I promise. But um, as of right now, that's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to grab some. Wow, look at this big old beefy dude. Dang. Dang. I'm going to grab some. You know it. You know it. I'm going to grab some of my go uh, green gold. These are my Daniel Smiths. I'm just going to start. I didn't tape it down or anything because I want the whole thing covered. And then I'm going to grab some of my sap green because it's so beautiful together. And I'm going to grab some of my indigo. I don't know about this brush. Yeah, I'm not doing a whole... Um, I don't, you could do patterns, you can do designs, you could do stripes, you could do um, polka dots. It's up to you what you want your background about. I don't want it to dominate too much. I just want it to be interesting in the background. The thing with these brush pans is that they hurt my hand over time. I want to love them, but because you have to squeeze them so often, I don't know, maybe I'm doing it wrong. that it makes my hand hurt. I've been using them in my journals for my 10 minutes of anything projects. A couple days ago I did like a, a moon face and it hurt. By the time I was done, my hand was dead. Maybe I am doing it wrong, I don't know. I don't know, probably. And I love that some white was left. I'm gonna come back up here and add some more water. And then we're gonna put this to the side, to the side to dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want so much water there. Make sure to wipe off your surface so you don't get it on your acetate. And we'll come back to that when we're done. Okay, I'm going to clean off this really quick. The other thing with these, oh, I've noticed the if they're brand new baby, brand new, never been used water brushes, whatever color, you, if it's a bold color, whatever color you put on it kind of stays. It stains if they're white tip especially, but even the clear ones, 
it stains the, the brush. Okay, so now I think, therefore I am, <laughs> just kidding. I'm gonna put, can you guys see that? No, I'm gonna put white beneath it just so you guys can see. I'm gonna grab a piece of copy paper. It's gonna be smaller than that, but at least so you guys can see what it is I'm doing. Make sure to flip it. Flip it. It's gonna be weird because her face looks crooked now. <laughs> and I will be right back. Okay, so I've changed my mind. I've decided I'm going to do bright and colorful. And when you're working, you have to keep in mind, when you're working, it is, um, because it's a non-porous surface, you don't need a lot, first of all. You don't need a lot of paints. Second of all, um, we're going to do it kind of like a, what's it called? We're going to paint in strokes as opposed to, like, we're going to see defined strokes. We're not going to do a lot of blendy blendy when we do this. I'm just going to lay out a bunch of colors. Because it's a non-porous surface. But it, it, depending on where you are, it can dry quicker. So this is why I'm laying out um, paints first. Because I want to be ready if it decides to dry quick on me. Black on everywhere. I need to shake these up a little bit. Put a little white on there just so that I have something if I want to lighten it. And I put a piece of white paper underneath so you guys can see. I would suggest you guys do that at home too, just so it's easier to um, see your lines and see what you're doing. You guys see that? I'm just adding a bunch of color. And these are brand new, so I'm shaking them up because they, I'm sure, have settled and separated a bit. Now, when you're working, you don't have to worry about going over the black lines. I made segments so that I could create um, detail in each space, but um, the black lines are these, and they're on the other side. They're nice and safe, so you can't hurt them at all. Right, right, right. We shall see. You have to be patient with this project, you guys, because it is... Um, it's, it's acetate, you're working on a non-porous surface, so some of the times you're gonna end up picking up the paint. This is why I wanna work in strokes. I wanna work, I'm laying in the darks first. And you wanna go on a little thick. It just helps with as opposed to like, so if you go too thin, first of all, a couple things. Your brush needs to be dry, as dry as it can be. I know you're gonna have to clean it to, you know, get new colors and stuff. But once you wet it, try to clean it as best you can. And whatever colors you lay down first are the colors that are going to be most dominant, I guess is the way to explain it. See, I went over her eyelash, her black eyeliner right there because on the other side, it's fine. And I'm gonna clean this. Dry it really well, because I don't want any extra water on this, because it is plastic. I'm gonna pick up, put some stuff here. You can already tell it's got too much water. There, do you guys see that? Let me come in. I'm trying not to touch the paper. And go on and so forth. Don't want to wait too long because I don't want it to start drying to where I can't move things. We want to be able to move stuff. So anywhere you know that there's a shadow, the shadow goes in first. Because if you lay it, whatever gets laid on top, once because it's acrylic, so once it dries, if it's, um, um, if you put the darker on top of a lighter, you won't really see it. You'll see whatever color goes down first and so on and so on. So 
Remember I said this is going to be easy. Make sure to clean your brush really well, no water. So now I know my darks are just going to go up here, but this is going to be lighter. So I want to start pulling in my lights while things are still a little wet. So that I can have more of a, you know, certain areas blendy blendy. Let's see what this looks like. There we go. Now we're talking and it does this really cool. Like sometimes it kind of reminds me of watercolor a little bit with the way it smears and dries on the other side <laughs> or when you flip it over, I should say. I need to clean my brush, dry it off really well. Don't worry too much about the black lines unless you don't want paint in that area. Then maybe think about where you're going. I mean, I always I try to fill it in like a coloring book page, you know, like the, the lines of a coloring book page. If you want things to dry quicker, I, you can use a heat gun. Just keep it away from the plastic because it is plastic. It will warp it and melt it. So just got to be smart about it. Let's see what we got going on here. I love it because you get this really cool like textural movement and um, patterns, especially when you start pulling from the other colors. Let's pull some of this. And if I don't like something, I can do that. <laughs> That's nice, huh? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. These are my shadows on the side of her nose. Clean my brush off. Bring those highlights down. So cool, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna work faster so this doesn't dry too much. I wanna combo both. Cheek shadows. Cheek shadows. Let's see if we can put on there. You can also tell. Um, if you've missed a spot when you flip it over. Remember, notice there's strokes. It's all strokes. Ooh. Very much feels like a um, like a Monet style because of the way the painting is. I'll put some some shadow on the tip of her nose. My brush is still too wet. You guys, so cool. I love it. Like I said, if you don't like a part, you can always, oh, you know, just wipe it off and start again.
you will have to go over and over, you know, flip over and over again because you're not sure. Once you start building up your layers, it's hard to tell which color is dominant on the other side. You guys, so much fun. Okay, how are you guys? How we doing? All right, I'm gonna go for it. Have fun, you guys.
So all right, you guys, she's up against her background. And she is awesome. I love this so much. So think about, remember, think about contrast on the color wheel. <clears throat> the opposites attract, background, whatever it is you're gonna do here. You wanna make sure there's a good contrast in the background so you don't lose her. I'm in love. I'm so glad I finally did it because I said I've been thinking about it for a while. This is very much like, her eyes are special. <laughs> Um, uh, this is very animated, like animation, animation. I should have said at the beginning, it's like creating your own animated cell. It's, but it's your work, it's your version, it's you. And like I said before, you can also, um, I will include this, I didn't say this, but I will include this as a, a image to use as a reference. And please, please, please don't, please take the time, do this because it's such a cool technique. I know some of you won't and that's totally fine. You'll just use the image as a reference but I really want you guys to try it because it's so much fun. Once you get in the swing of things and you start recognizing like when you flip over and over, you know, you see where things need to go and stuff. And look at the effect. I mean, just look what, just look at how cool it is. Just look at how cool it is. I just think it's amazing. Um, yeah, remember go all, go over the black lines, not all the way over the black lines, like cover the black lines, whatever segment you're working on so that you don't have these little spaces in between. But if you do, you can see that the background comes through. So it's not the end of the world. Like I have some spots on the shirt here that I like right here, right here, right here that don't aren't all the way sealed with paint. So the shirt comes or the background comes through and it's totally fine. It doesn't matter at all. But this was fun. So much fun, you guys. Give it a shot. Thank you so much for being here. Please, if you're enjoying How to Tuesdays, like and subscribe and click that bell so you get the personal notifications. Also, come and check me out on Patreon, okay, you guys? I would love, you get the full real-time version of this lesson on Patreon. All my How To Tuesdays you get there, plus more depending on what tier you sign up for. All right, you guys, love you. Thank you for being here. I will see you next week. Bye.